Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. Hi, I'm Chris Holm, and I play guitar, sing, and uh, play harmonica. I'm Amanda White. I sing, play percussion, and a little uh, kazoo. I'm Sean Richter. I play drums and a little bit of background vocals. How did the Fattening Frogs first begin? It started with me, a different drummer and a different guitar player, kind of having the idea of playing old-time music. So we started we you know, put a little group together to play early country blues, early country, just type stuff. And, just kind of went from there. And where does the name come from? The name comes from a Sonny Boy Williamson song, Fattening Frogs for Snakes. We wanted to find a name that was sort of like, we liked how the Rolling Stones got their name from a Muddy Waters song. We just kind of looked at other old blues songs that would make for kind of good, evocative band names, and that's the one we all liked. You know, kind of not too serious, kind of fun, but kind of evokes that older era.
an old bridge strong and tall, but my time is coming gone. Pull my rails, pull the ties, and the trains don't run here anymore. You pass by each and every day in your trucks and cars on your highway. You don't need the trains, you say, and the trains don't run here anymore. Oh, but I say to remind. Of a time when the railways were the lifeblood of the land. Your small towns fading away, born on the stops of the trains, but the trains don't run here anymore. Where the trains met the timbered grain and the men Now they're relics just like me And the trains don't run here anymore All oh, that I stand to remind Of a time When the railways were the lifeblood of the land Your small town What are some other influences on the Fatten and Frog sound? I like a lot of the early jazz vocalists. I grew up listening to a lot of that. Early blues too. And I also like a lot of 60s soul. And that's the neat thing about living in the time that we live in is that I can peer back at all these different eras and different genres and they all kind of rub off on me in their own different way. And they'll come around Three little boys Who can really make you do Dancing, singing along with the crowd
I fell in love with it, first time I ever heard him. I saw him play at a couple of different blues festivals while I was playing with different bands and stuff. And just the uniqueness of their sound and the style that they were playing, no one else is really playing that much anymore. It's stuff that I kind of influenced me growing up and stuff like that. So when I heard them and found out they needed a drummer and said, hey, you guys will have me, I'll love to be your drummer. And they took me, so.
Minnesota in general is one of those scenes where everybody seems to play in you know, at least two or three bands. There's very few people that I know that had their one dedicated project that that's all they focus on playing music. It's fun to play with other people sometimes, you know, mix somebody else into the mix and it becomes less like a job and I think that's a nice thing about the Minnesota scene. It also reinforces that sense of community too. Mm -hmm. You know somebody that's played with them if you haven't. No. Yeah, we're all one big family, musician family in Minnesota here. You're 
Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. It's been a pleasure being on Backroads. Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you enjoy watching Backroads online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org.